Today, I'm making a pair of standing heart memorials for a pair of beagles, goose, and colt. The memorials are not the same. One is walnut with a paw carved in, and as for color, they wanted a color like the moon. The other is hickory with a classic red heart. That's the extent of what I know about goose and colt, so I'll be focusing my narrative on beagles as a breed. They are both interesting and popular. Friendly, curious, and smart are perhaps the three best words to describe the most petite member of the hound group, though if you own one, you might also insist on difficult being added to that list. The beagle is an import from the UK, so we have to cross the pond to properly begin their story. We'll start with the name Beagle, and the truth is, we're not sure where it's from. One theory is that it's from an old French word, meaning something close to gaping throat. Another theory is that it is from Old Gaelic, as a thousand years ago, the Celts seemed to use a small, houndy-type dog to assist with small game hunting, with a name similar to Beagle. We are not going to know for sure. Perhaps it is a case of convergent dog naming. These historic beagles started out even smaller than the modern standard of 13 to 16 inches allows. Even today's smallest 13-inch beagle would tower over the, quote, pocket beagles that were popular in the 1500s. These tiny dogs were just 8 to 9 inches tall, and would quite literally fit in, and were kept in, the oversized pockets of hunting coats. They were released by the hunters in small groups to flush out small game hiding in thickets and brambles when a larger dog would get stuck. While it is tempting to picture these as just tiny adorbs versions of today's beagles, they likely weren't. Really, the records about what dogs were bred to create other dogs hundreds of years ago are at best stories combined with rumor and conjecture. Plus, many of the dogs supposedly bred to create these beagles don't exist anymore either. There are actually a lot of extinct dog breeds. The modern beagle we know and love began to be codified in the 1830s in Essex, England, for the express purpose of hunting small game. And small game almost always means rabbits. Not long after, they began to be imported into the U.S. for the same purpose, and slowly gained in popularity, but mostly among hunters. That is, until beagles became immortal, on October of 1950, when Snoopy, Charlie Brown's dog, made his first appearance in the Peanuts comic strip. Beagles were on the rise anyway, and with the sudden popularity of this cartoon, their desirability went through the roof. Perhaps also the post-war boom played into this as well. The compact and friendly beagle was good with children, and if you add a small yard and a picket fence to that image, you have 1950s America. According to the AKC, beagles were the most popular dog for six of the nine years that comprised the 1950s. Getting into the 1960s, beagles began to appear in the laps of famous people, notably Bob Dylan and President Lyndon Johnson, who had four beagles during his time at the White House, though not all at the same time. He started with him and her, those were their names, just like the pronouns. One afternoon, while walking the dogs in a large mixed group, he stopped to show off him's ears, lifting the dog to a standing position by them. A photographer got this shot of it, and there was general outcry from the dog community. Later, and sadly, that same dog, him, was accidentally run over and killed by the president's own limousine while a chauffeur was reparking it. The dog was chasing a squirrel and dashed directly under the moving rear tires. Her also met an unfortunate and early end when she ingested a large rock and it couldn't be removed. Him and her had had some puppies though, and one dog, Edgar, was kept from that litter. Then the president was gifted another beagle, Freckles, after her passed from the rock eating. So overall, he came to and left the White House with two beagles, but not the same two. Setting the politics aside, it does seem that the president and his family genuinely loved their dogs. There are many photos of Lyndon Johnson showing them off, walking them, rubbing their bellies, giving them treats, and generally cuddling them. 
I don't think he intended to hurt his dog or did hurt his dog during the earlifting incident, even though we likely wouldn't do that today. More modern celebrities who selected beagles include Barry Manilow, David Hasselhoff, George Clooney, and Meghan Markle. In 2021, beagles were the sixth most popular dog in the U.S., and their colorations have proliferated naturally over time. Of the 25 total coat combinations for beagles, 14 are recognized as show-worthy today. Most beagles are a combination of three colors, black, white, and tan. Rarely, beagles can be any two of those colors, or have a coat that features extensive ticking, like their larger hound cousins. Here is an image of a blue tick beagle. Here is a photo of a dog who looked like a blue tick beagle in the grainy black and white photo a dog pound in Kentucky published. Her appearance and the crummy photo saved her. Colorado Beagle Rescue pulled her out, thinking she was a rare and valuable blue tick beagle. Surprise, she is an American English coonhound, and she lives at my house. Please do click the thumbs up button and subscribe for more dog infotainment and stories. Few beagles today go on the organized rabbit hunts that they were bred for. Most are good family dogs, pending that you know what you're getting into. Your beagle is likely happy, friendly, durable, and adds at least 50% more adorableness to your household. But there are a couple of things to look out for. They are also smart, stubborn, very difficult to train, and need lots of exercise. Recall that smart isn't the same as cooperative or trainable. Your beagle, like all dogs in the hound group, will never be trustworthy off of a leash. They can also be sassy and loud, and easily can become overweight owing to their adoration of food and their ability to con humans out of far more of it than is truly healthy for them. If you do find a trainable beagle and really know what you're doing, you will have access to a superb quality nose. Beagles are second only to bloodhounds in the dog olfactory pantheon. You have about 5 million cells in your nose that detect odors. Beagles have about 220 million and a larger proportion of their brain is devoted to processing this information. And they definitely have their 10,000 hours practicing. It is not hyperbole to say that a trained beagle's sense of smell is 10,000 times better than yours. They are used to sniff out contraband in many contexts, and a couple have been even trained to smell your breath and alert if they smell lung cancer. They are 97% accurate doing this, does this mean all oncologists will now have beagles in their offices? Sadly, probably not. Scientists are trying to isolate the compounds the dogs are detecting and developing a machine that will do the same thing. Training a dog to that level of skill is extremely time-consuming and expensive. And beagles, being smart, have their own agenda, and it might not involve cooperation on any given day. This is how the memorials for Goose and Colt turned out. I hope across the Rainbow Bridge they are frolicking in the grass, chasing bunnies who always get away. When the unfortunate time comes that your beagles pass, I can make you a memorial to remember their colorful personalities with. Thanks for watching.